This is Ray Discusses Rays. My name is Ray Popic. I'm the curator at the Greater Cleveland Aquarium. My background is in animal care and particularly sharks and stingrays. And we're going to talk a little bit more about sharks and stingrays now. Here at Greater Cleveland Aquarium, we have four species of stingray. One freshwater stingray in our Amazon exhibit. It's actually a hybridized version. Um, then we have three species of saltwater ray. There are the cow nose stingrays, the southern stingrays, and we have one Atlantic stingray. The Atlantic stingray is in our touch pool. The other two species are in the touch pool as well as the shark exhibit. Uh, they tend to occupy different areas of the water and don't really interact very much. Uh, just like any other fish in the exhibit, we've chosen them to cohabitate well and they're not a food item for the sharks. Freshwater stingrays are a whole different genus from saltwater stingrays. So they do have some common lineage in the past, but uh, the reason they do look so much different is just from the habitat they live in. They're gonna live in murkier waters with darker substrates, leaves, things like that. And that's gonna lead them to need different coloration for camouflage. It's a very good question. That actually came from millions of years worth of evolution. There's a common ancestor from a few hundred million years ago that slowly started to live in some of the fresher waters that eventually evolved into freshwater stingrays as we know them. Uh, nowadays, a lot of the coastal species of saltwater uh, stingrays do go in brackish areas and occasionally into freshwater, but they can't do it for a long term. But through evolution, a few of them managed to get up a little further upstream and stay there permanently. Yes, stingrays are related to sharks. Stingrays and sharks are both in the cartilaginous fish group known as elasmobranch, and they all have cartilaginous skeletons, so like your nose or your earlobes. And that's their biggest distinguishing feature. Stingrays are benthic feeders, so they're typically finding food along the sand bed, uh, buried in the sand or on the seafloor, or in freshwater varieties in the riverbeds. There's a couple of exceptions, like the pelagic stingray, who actually can catch fish out of the water column and never really comes in contact with the, the bottom of the ocean. With stingrays being on the bottom of the uh, seafloor, if they took water in through their mouth, they'd get a whole mouthful of sand, wouldn't they? So instead, they've evolved and developed spiracles on the top of their head so they can bring in new clean water to breathe, and it goes through those into their gills and out the gill slits on the bottom. So when you see them swim up on the window, you'll see gill slits on their belly. That's how the, air, uh, the water would exit. Uh, that's dual purpose, uh, both for their own protection and hiding from predators, but also as predators themselves, it can help them to hide and wait to ambush their food. Baby stingrays are often called pups, uh, as are most other shark species. You'd call them pups once they're born, and they can come out as a live birth or as a egg laid process. One of my favorite questions. So stingrays are not poisonous, they are venomous. The difference between poison and venom is if it eats you or attacks you and you get sick, then that's a venom or a toxin. If you eat it, then you get sick, then it is poisonous. But their barb, if it was to poke you, would envenomate you, so they are venomous. You cannot get stung by our stingrays. Sting uh, is actually a mechanism of defense. So first off, as long as we're being polite to our stingrays and our animals, you won't have any problem with it. Uh, also, our animals are used to being touched all day. That's part of what they're here. They interact with our guests. We do feeding programs with them to encourage that. But we also go the extra step and make sure to trim the barbs on all of our stingrays that our public interacts with. So much like you'd cut the toenails on your dog, we do a simple trim on a regular basis as needed to keep those blunted and not pointy at all to be any threat or damage to the guests. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you want to learn more about stingrays, come visit us at the Greater Cleveland Aquarium and check out our 11,000 gallon touch pool in our coastal gallery.